Just before we get into this video guys, if you want to follow me on social media, on Twitter and Instagram, the links are here. And if you also want to support me on Patreon as well and help out my channel, that would be absolutely awesome as well. But, let's get on with the video. Hey guys, Wingy here and welcome to a brand new video. So a little while ago, I did a video called Why You Should Watch Inside Number 9 and I thought... Oh, there's other shows that I want to talk about, so let's talk about them. So in this one, as you can see from the title and the thumbnail, and I mean, you're in it now, so you probably clicked on it because you knew I'd be talking about Life on Mars. Main reason being, I want to start watching it again, and also, I'm going to Comic Con at the start of March. John Sim is also going to be there, so hopefully I get a chance to meet him, and if any of you guys are going to Comic Con as well in March, I think it's the Saturday that I'm going, then maybe I can bump into a few of you guys as well. But anyway... Let's talk about Life on Mars. Now at this stage, I think most people have seen Life on Mars. And when I say Life on Mars, I mean the original UK version, not that fucking terrible American remake of Life on Mars, which I haven't seen apart from the ending. Oh my God, if you have not seen the ending of the American version of Life on Mars, go and look it up because it is funny as fuck. And I cannot believe that they thought that would be a worthy remake. Jesus Christ. Anyway, let's talk about the proper one. So Life on Mars is a series back from 2006, which stars John Sim, Philip Glenister, and basically what happens is a detective by the name of Sam Tyler, he has an accident and he wakes up in 1973 and he doesn't know whether He's dreaming, he's in a coma, he's dead. He has no idea what's going on. Throughout the entire series, Sam has to cope with living in the 70s and being restricted by the time period because obviously back then there was no internet, there was no DNA testing, there was no basically modern policing. There are certain things that they would do back in the 70s that you could not get away with from Sam's time. So it's interesting to see how those two worlds and attitudes collide with each other and the embodiment of this is Gene Hunt, who is Sam's superior officer. Now, I'm going to talk a bit more about Gene later on. But what I really like about this show is, yes, you are following Sam Tyler's journey, but it also offers you a plethora of different genres. I say a plethora, there's a few, not loads. So, on the one hand, it is a 70s cop show, and there are different homages to that. It's a serious drama in places. It's absolutely hysterical in other places and there's also elements of science fiction in this as well so overall it is a really well-rounded show the most fascinating thing about it though isn't necessarily seeing all of that it is sam the focus is sam and his story how he's coping with life in the 70s how he's coping with what's actually happening to him the question of what is actually happening to him and one of the really interesting thing is the fact that things from sam's time end up coming back to him in the past so he'll meet people like his mother when she was young or his father there's a big storyline with his dad i think there's a storyline with his auntie as well and there's former colleagues of his like when they were younger and first joining the force because obviously this is the 1970s and sam's from like nearly 40 years in the future it's just interesting watching sam interact with these people that he knew at a certain point but they're not quite the same person that he knew. Another really interesting thing is the fact that Sam and Gene Hunt just have this incredible relationship. Now, as I said, I will talk about it in more detail. Philip Glenister is just fucking min. I absolutely adore Gene Hunt. He is one of the greatest television characters of all time. For me personally, I think he's the best TV detective that we've ever had. I don't care about your Sherlock's or your Columbo's. It is Gene fucking Hunt for me. One small nitpick, and this is a proper fucking nitpick, but I was actually fucking devastated when I found out that Philip Glenister was actually a southerner, and he was putting on that accent. I genuinely thought he was Mancunian. So... Philip Glenister, credit to you, because I have not heard anybody put on a genuinely decent Mancunian accent the way that he has. It's incredible. His his actual voice sounds fake in comparison to his voice as Gene Hunt. It's just bizarre. Like I say, seeing Sam and Gene clash throughout the entire series is just so funny, because you see Gene as this very sort of old school brutish detective whereas you've got sam who is a lot more methodical and will think things through so for example sam will actually think about it and think well no because if he was doing this and that and whatnot that doesn't quite add up whereas gene will just hop into cortina kick down this bloke's door and then rough him up a bit but throughout the course of the series you see that sam sort of warms up to gene and gene sort of warms up to sam as well and they learn things from each other you see both of these characters grow and i love that there's too many shows where you see these two characters that just clash and they play it off as a comedy but they never really grow from that i love seeing them naturally sort of 
rub off each other. So by the end of the series, you see elements of Jean in Sam and vice versa. Another thing that is really, really great about Life on Mars is the fact that, yeah, you've got Sam's story, but the actual detective 70s cop show style stuff is actually really good, and it's a really good cop show. There are some genuinely really good mysteries in this series, like certain episodes you are really trying to figure out actually who was the killer or who was the burglar or stuff like that. I think one of my favourite episodes is the football episode, the hooligan episode. It's a really well written episode, there's a lot of funny moments in it and it's just stuff like that that I can just properly sink my teeth into. And a lot of the time it's not predictable, you can't think, ah well, finally they got him, it was obvious wasn't it? A lot of the time it's just sort of like, oh. I didn't see that coming, that's proper clever. There is quite a few layers to this series. The science fiction type of stuff kind of comes into it when we figure out more about why Sam is in the 70s and what actually happened to him and all the sort of surrounding things between that. It's focused more on in the second series, but when you get to that ending, it's so satisfying. It's one of the most satisfying TV endings that I think we've ever had, in my opinion anyway. Obviously, I've not seen every single TV show. Not every TV show has ended naturally. Sometimes they're just cancelled or whatever, but I honestly believe that this is one of the best endings to a TV show. Oh, the music is great as well. I totally forgot. It's full of different 70s music. Like, I fell in love with so many different artists because of this series. Artists like T-Rex and The Sweet are just blasting out throughout this entire series. ELO is in this series as well. There's just so many different artists where I didn't really go back and listen to music before, like from the 70s or whatnot, but because of this series, I went out and I listened to it. And I'm not disappointed. I found some of my favourite songs of all time because of Life on Mars. The series really does use music to its advantage as well. It plays on that nostalgia for viewers who obviously grew up in the 70s. But a lot of the time, it also fits with what is happening on screen. Which sounds like an obvious thing, but you'd be surprised at how many times a movie or a TV show will just throw in a song just because it's a good song. Life on Mars, I think, gets it right. Life on Mars is genuinely one of the greatest TV shows in recent memory. Like, I was about 11 years old when this came out and I loved it then and I still love it now. Must confess, and I will do a video on the sequel series, Ashes to Ashes, I do kind of prefer Ashes to Ashes, which I know, sacrilege, not a lot of people agree with me on that, but I will get to that when it comes to the video on Ashes to Ashes. But yeah, if you haven't seen it, you've got to check out Life on Mars. I don't know if it's on iPlayer, but the DVDs are probably out there somewhere, it might be on Netflix, I, d I don't know where it is, but just try and find it. But in the comments below, let me know what you think if you have seen Life on Mars, do you like it? Do you agree with what I'm saying? To me, this is one of those series where it's kind of universally accepted that it is pretty fucking good. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like on it. Subscribe for more, because like I say, I will be doing that Ashes to Ashes video at some point, as well as all the other crap that ends up on here, so yeah, subscribe. Social media and Patreon links are in the description as always, so if you would follow me on any of those things, I would absolutely love you forever. But until next time, guys, you take care of yourselves. Goodbye.